Bipolar Disorder, Wikipedia Article Audio Bipolar Disorder, previously known as Manic Depression, is a mental disorder that causes periods of depression and periods of elevated mood. The elevated mood is significant and is known as mania or hypomania, depending on its severity, or whether symptoms of psychosis are present. During mania, an individual behaves or feels abnormally energetic, happy, or irritable. Individuals often make poorly thought-out decisions with little regard to the consequences. The need for sleep is usually reduced during manic phases. During periods of depression, there may be crying, a negative outlook on life, and poor eye contact with others. The risk of suicide among those with the illness is high at greater than 6% over 20 years, while self-harm occurs in 30A Euro 40%. Other mental health issues such as anxiety disorders and substance use disorder are commonly associated. The causes are not clearly understood, but both environmental and genetic factors play a role. Many genes of small effect contribute to risk. Environmental factors include a history of childhood abuse, and long-term stress. The condition is divided into bipolar eye disorder if there has been at least one manic episode, with or without depressive episodes, and bipolar II disorder if there has been at least one hypomanic episode and one major depressive episode. In those with less severe symptoms of a prolonged duration, the condition cyclothymic disorder may be diagnosed. If due to drugs or medical problems, it is classified separately. Other conditions that may present in a similar manner include attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, personality disorders, schizophrenia, and substance use disorder as well as a number of medical conditions. Medical testing is not required for a diagnosis, though blood tests or medical imaging can be done to rule out other problems. Signs and Symptoms Manic Episodes Treatment commonly includes psychotherapy, as well as medications such as mood stabilizers and antipsychotics. Examples of mood stabilizers that are commonly used include lithium and various anticonvulsants. Involuntary treatment in a hospital may be needed if a person is a risk to themselves or others but refuses treatment. Severe behavioral problems, such as agitation or combativeness, may be managed with short-term antipsychotics or benzodiazepines. In periods of mania it is recommended that antidepressants be stopped. If antidepressants are used for periods of depression they should be used with a mood stabilizer. Electroconvulsive therapy, while not very well studied, may be helpful for those who do not respond to other treatments. If treatments are stopped, it is recommended that this be done slowly. Many individuals have financial, social, or work-related problems due to the illness. These difficulties occur a quarter to a third of the time on average. The risk of death from natural causes such as heart disease is twice that of the general population. This is due to poor lifestyle choices and the side effects from medications. Bipolar disorder affects approximately 1% of the global population. In the United States about 3% are estimated to be affected at some point in their life. The most common age at which symptoms begin is 25. Rates appear to be similar in females and males. The economic costs of the disorder has been estimated at $45 billion for the United States in 1991. A large proportion of this was related to a higher number of missed work days, estimated at 50 per year. People with bipolar disorder often face problems with social stigma. 
Mania is the defining feature of bipolar disorder and can occur with different levels of severity. With milder levels of mania, known as hypomania, individuals are energetic, excitable, and may be highly productive. As hypomania worsens, individuals begin to exhibit erratic and impulsive behavior, often making poor decisions due to unrealistic ideas about the future, and sleep less. At the extreme, manic individuals can experience distorted or delusional beliefs about the universe, hallucinate, hear voices, to the point of psychosis. A depressive episode commonly follows an episode of mania. The biological mechanisms responsible for switching from a manic or hypomanic episode to a depressive episode, or vice versa, remain poorly understood. Mania is a distinct period of at least one week of elevated or irritable mood, which can range from euphoria to delirium, and those experiencing hypo or mania may exhibit three or more of the following behaviors, speak in a rapid, uninterruptible manner, short attention span, racing thoughts, increased goal-oriented activities, agitation, or they may exhibit behaviors characterized as impulsive or high-risk, such as hypersexuality or excessive spending. To meet the definition for a manic episode, these behaviors must impair the individual's ability to socialize or work. If untreated, a manic episode usually lasts three to six months. People with hypomania or mania may experience a decreased need of sleep, impaired judgment, and speak excessively and very rapidly. Manic individuals often have a history of substance abuse developed over years as a form of self-medication. At the more extreme, a person in a full-blown manic state can experience psychosis, a break with reality, a state in which thinking is affected along with mood. They may feel unstoppable, or as if they have been chosen and are on a special mission, or have other grandiose or delusional ideas. This may lead to violent behavior and, sometimes, hospitalization in an inpatient psychiatric hospital. The severity of manic symptoms can be measured by rating scales such as the Young Mania Rating Scale, though questions remain about the reliability of these scales. Hypomanic Episodes The onset of a manic or depressive episode is often foreshadowed by sleep disturbances. Mood changes, psychomotor, and appetite changes, and an increase in anxiety can also occur up to three weeks before a manic episode develops. Hypomania is the milder form of mania, defined as at least four days of the same criteria as mania, but does not cause a significant decrease in the individual's ability to socialize or work lacks psychotic features such as delusions or hallucinations, and does not require psychiatric hospitalization. Overall functioning may actually increase during episodes of hypomania and is thought to serve as a defense mechanism against depression by some. Hypomanic episodes rarely progress to full-blown manic episodes. Some people who experience hypomania show increased creativity while others are irritable or demonstrate poor judgment. Depressive Episodes Hypomania may feel good to some persons who experience it, though most people who experience hypomania state that the stress of the experience is very painful. Bipolar people who experience hypomania, however, tend to forget the effects of their actions on those around them. Even when family and friends recognize mood swings, the individual will often deny that anything is wrong. What might be called a hypomanic event, if not accompanied by depressive episodes, is often not deemed problematic, unless the mood changes are uncontrollable, volatile, or mercurial. Most commonly, Symptoms continue for a few weeks to a few months.
Symptoms of the depressive phase of bipolar disorder include persistent feelings of sadness, irritability, or anger, loss of interest in previously enjoyed activities, excessive or inappropriate guilt, hopelessness, sleeping too much or not enough, changes in appetite and slash or weight, fatigue, problems concentrating, self-loathing or feelings of worthlessness, and thoughts of death or suicide. In severe cases, the individual may develop symptoms of psychosis, a condition also known as severe bipolar disorder with psychotic features. These symptoms include delusions and hallucinations. A major depressive episode persists for at least two weeks, and may result in suicide if left untreated. The earlier the age of onset, the more likely the first few episodes are to be depressive. Since a diagnosis of bipolar disorder requires a manic or hypomanic episode, many affected individuals are initially misdiagnosed as having major depression and then incorrectly treated with prescribed antidepressants. Mixed Affective Episodes In bipolar disorder, mixed state is a condition during which symptoms of both mania and depression occur simultaneously. Individuals experiencing a mixed state may have manic symptoms such as grandiose thoughts while simultaneously experiencing depressive symptoms such as excessive guilt or feeling suicidal. Mixed states are considered to be high risk for suicidal behavior since depressive emotions such as hopelessness are often paired with mood swings or difficulties with impulse control. Anxiety disorders occur more frequently as a comorbidity in mixed bipolar episodes than in non-mixed bipolar depression or mania. Substance abuse also follows this trend, thereby appearing to depict bipolar symptoms as no more than a consequence of substance abuse. Associated Features Associated features are clinical phenomena that often accompany the disorder but are not part of the diagnostic criteria. In adults with the condition, bipolar disorder is often accompanied by changes in cognitive processes and abilities. These include reduced attentional and executive capabilities and impaired memory. How the individual processes the universe also depends on the phase of the disorder with differential characteristics between the manic, hypomanic, and depressive states. Some studies have found a significant association between bipolar disorder and creativity. Those with bipolar disorder may have difficulty in maintaining relationships. There are several common childhood precursors seen in children who later receive a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. These disorders include mood abnormalities, full major depressive episodes, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Comorbid conditions The diagnosis of bipolar disorder can be complicated by coexisting psychiatric conditions including the following, obsessive-compulsive disorder, substance abuse, eating disorders, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, Social Phobia, Premenstrual Syndrome, or Panic Disorder. A careful longitudinal analysis of symptoms and episodes, enriched if possible by discussions with friends and family members, is crucial to establishing a treatment plan where these comorbidities exist. The causes of bipolar disorder likely vary between individuals and the exact mechanism underlying the disorder remains unclear. Genetic influences are believed to account for 60A Euro 80% of the risk of developing the disorder indicating a strong hereditary component. The overall heritability of the bipolar spectrum has been estimated at 0.71. Twin studies have been limited by relatively small sample sizes but have indicated a substantial genetic contribution, as well as environmental influence. For bipolar disorder type I, 
the rate at which identical twins will both have bipolar disorder type I is estimated at around 40%, compared to about 5% in fraternal twins. A combination of bipolar I, 2, and cyclothymia similarly produced rates of 42% and 11%, with a relatively lower ratio for bipolar II that likely reflects heterogeneity. There is overlap with major depression and if this is also counted in the CO twin the concordance with bipolar disorder rises to 67% in identical twins and 19% in fraternal twins. The relatively low concordance between fraternal twins brought up together suggests that shared family environmental effects are limited, although the ability to detect them has been limited by small sample sizes. Causes Behavioral genetic studies have suggested that many chromosomal regions and candidate genes are related to bipolar disorder susceptibility with each gene exerting a mild to moderate effect. The risk of bipolar disorder is nearly tenfold higher in first-degree relatives of those affected with bipolar disorder when compared to the general population, similarly, the risk of major depressive disorder is three times higher in relatives of those with bipolar disorder when compared to the general population. Although the first genetic linkage finding for mania was in 1969, the linkage studies have been inconsistent. The largest and most recent genome-wide association study failed to find any particular locus that exerts a large effect reinforcing the idea that no single gene is responsible for bipolar disorder in most cases. Polymorphisms in BDNF, DRD4, DAO, and TPH1 have been frequently associated with bipolar disorder and were initially successful in a meta-analysis, but failed after correction for multiple testing. On the other hand, two polymorphisms in TPH1 were identified as being associated with bipolar disorder. Due to the inconsistent findings in GWAS, Multiple studies have undertaken the approach of analyzing SNPs in biological pathways. Signaling pathways traditionally associated with bipolar disorder that have been supported by these studies include CRH signaling, cardiac I superscript 2 adrenergic signaling, phospholipase C signaling, glutamate receptor signaling, cardiac hypertrophy signaling, WNT signaling, notch signaling, and endothelin-1 signaling. Of the 16 genes identified in these pathways, three were found to be dysregulated in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex portion of the brain in post-mortem studies, CACNA1C, GNG2, and ITPR2. Findings point strongly to heterogeneity, with different genes being implicated in different families. Robust and replicable genome-wide significant associations showed several common single nucleotide polymorphisms, including variants within the genes CACNA1C, ODZ4, and NCAN. Advanced paternal age has been linked to a somewhat increased chance of bipolar disorder in offspring, consistent with a hypothesis of increased new genetic mutations. Genetic Environmental factors play a significant role in the development and course of bipolar disorder, and individual psychosocial variables may interact with genetic dispositions. It is probable that recent life events and interpersonal relationships contribute to the onset and recurrence of bipolar mood episodes, just as they do for unipolar depression. In surveys, 30A Euro 50% of adults diagnosed with bipolar disorder report traumatic slash abusive experiences in childhood, which is associated on average with earlier onset, a higher rate of suicide attempts and more CO-occurring disorders such as PTSD. The number of reported stressful events in childhood is higher in those with an adult diagnosis of bipolar spectrum disorder compared to those without, 
particularly events stemming from a harsh environment rather than from the child's own behavior. Environmental Less commonly, bipolar disorder or a bipolar-like disorder may occur as a result of or in association with a neurological condition or injury. Conditions like these and injuries include stroke, traumatic brain injury, HIV infection, multiple sclerosis, porphyria, and rarely temporal lobe epilepsy. Bipolar eye disorder at least one manic episode is necessary to make the diagnosis. Depressive episodes are common in the vast majority of cases with bipolar disorder I, but are unnecessary for the diagnosis. Specifiers such as mild, moderate, moderate severe, severe, and with psychotic features should be added as applicable to indicate the presentation and course of the disorder. Bipolar II disorder no manic episodes and one or more hypomanic episodes and one or more major depressive episode. Hypomanic episodes do not go to the full extremes of mania, and this can make bipolar 2 more difficult to diagnose, since the hypomanic episodes may simply appear as periods of successful high productivity and are reported less frequently than a distressing, crippling depression, cyclothymia. A history of hypomanic episodes with periods of depression that do not meet criteria for major depressive episodes. Abnormalities in the structure and slash or function of certain brain circuits could underlie bipolar. Meta-analyses of structural MRI studies in bipolar disorder report decreased volume in the left rostral anterior cingulate cortex, frontoinsular cortex ventral prefrontal cortex, and claustrum. Increases have been reported in the volume of the lateral ventricles, globus pallidus, subgenual anterior cingulate, and amygdala as well as in the rates of deep white matter hyperintensities. Functional MRI findings suggest that abnormal modulation between ventral prefrontal and limbic regions, especially the amygdala, likely contributes to poor emotional regulation and mood symptoms. Pharmacological treatment of mania increases ventral prefrontal cortex activity, normalizing it relative to controls, suggesting that VPFC hypoactivity is an indicator of mood state. On the other hand, Pre-treatment hyperactivity in the amygdala is reduced post-treatment but still increased relative to controls suggesting that it is a trait marker. Manic and depressive episodes tend to be characterized by ventral versus dorsal dysfunction in the ventral prefrontal cortex. During attentional tasks and resting, mania is associated with decreased orbitofrontal cortex activity, while depression is associated with increased resting metabolism. Consistent with affective disorders due to lesions, mania, and depression are lateralized in ventral prefrontal cortex dysfunction, with depression primarily being associated with the left VPFC, and mania the right VPFC. Abnormal VPFC activity, along with amygdala hyperactivity is found during euthymia as well as in healthy relatives of those with bipolar indicating possible trait features. Bipolar Disorder at Cully, Bipolar Disorder Overview from the U.S. National Institute of Mental Health website, NICE Bipolar Disorder Clinical Guidelines from the U.K. National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence website, International Society for Bipolar Disorders Task Force Report on Current Knowledge in Pediatric Bipolar Disorder and Future Directions Euthymic bipolar people show decreased activity in the lingual gyrus, while people who are manic demonstrate decreased activity in the inferior frontal cortex, while no differences were found in people with bipolar depression. People with bipolar have increased activation of left hemisphere ventral limbic areas and decreased activation of right hemisphere cortical structures related to cognition. Neurological 
Mechanism Physiological Neurochemical One proposed model for bipolar suggests that hypersensitivity of reward circuits consisting of frontostriatal circuits causes mania and hyposensitivity of these circuits cause depression. According to the Kindling hypothesis, when people who are genetically predisposed toward bipolar disorder experience stressful events, the stress threshold at which mood changes occur becomes progressively lower, until the episodes eventually start spontaneously. There is evidence supporting an association between early life stress and dysfunction of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis leading to its overactivation, which may play a role in the pathogenesis of bipolar disorder. Some of the brain components which have been proposed to play a role are the mitochondria and a sodium ADPase pump. Circadian rhythms and regulation of the hormone melatonin also seem to be altered. Dopamine, a known neurotransmitter responsible for mood cycling, has been shown to have increased transmission during the manic phase. The dopamine hypothesis states that the increase in dopamine results in secondary homeostatic down-regulation of key systems and receptors such as an increase in dopamine-mediated G-protein-coupled receptors. This results in decreased dopamine transmission characteristic of the depressive phase. The depressive phase ends with homeostatic upregulation potentially restarting the cycle over again. Glutamate is significantly increased within the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex during the manic phase of bipolar disorder, and returns to normal levels once the phase is over. The increase in GABA is possibly caused by a disturbance in early development causing a disturbance of cell migration and the formation of normal lamination, the layering of brain structures commonly associated with the cerebral cortex. Medications used to treat bipolar may exert their effect by modulating intracellular signaling, such as through depleting muinositol levels, inhibition of CAMP signaling, and through altering G-coupled proteins. Consistent with this, elevated levels of GI plus or minus I, GI plus or minus S, and GI plus or minus Q slash 11 have been reported in brain and blood samples, along with increased protein kinase A expression and sensitivity. Decreased levels of 5-hydroxyindoleacetic acid, a byproduct of serotonin, are present in the cerebrospinal fluid of persons with bipolar disorder during both the depressed and manic phases. Increased dopaminergic activity has been hypothesized in manic states due to the ability of dopamine agonists to stimulate mania in people with bipolar disorder. Decreased sensitivity of regulatory I plus or minus 2 adrenergic receptors as well as increased cell counts Indiana the locus ceruleus indicated increased noradrenergic activity in manic people. Low plasma GABA levels on both sides of the mood spectrum have been found. One review found no difference in monoamine levels, but found abnormal norepinephrine turnover in people with bipolar disorder. Tyrosine depletion was found to reduce the effects of methamphetamine in people with bipolar disorder as well as symptoms of mania, implicating dopamine in mania. VMAT2 binding was found to be increased in one study of people with bipolar mania. Prevention Attempts at prevention of bipolar disorder have focused on stress which, although not a diagnostically specific causal agent for bipolar, does place genetically and biologically vulnerable individuals at risk for a more severe course of illness. There has been debate regarding the causal relationship between usage of cannabis and bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is commonly diagnosed during adolescence or early adulthood, but onset can occur throughout the life cycle. 
the disorder can be difficult to distinguish from unipolar depression and the average delay in diagnosis is 5 a euro 10 years after symptoms begin. Diagnosis of bipolar disorder takes several factors into account and considers the self-reported experiences of the symptomatic individual, abnormal behavior reported by family members, friends, or co-workers, observable signs of illness as assessed by a clinician, and often a medical workup to rule out medical causes. In diagnosis, caregiver scored rating scales, specifically the mother, has been found to be more accurate than teacher and youth report in predicting identifying youths with bipolar disorder. Assessment is usually done on an outpatient basis. Admission to an inpatient facility is considered if there is a risk to oneself or others. The most widely used criteria for diagnosing bipolar disorder are from the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition and the World Health Organization's International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, 10th edition. The ICD-10 criteria are used more often in clinical settings outside of the U.S. while the DSM criteria are used clinically within the U.S. and are the prevailing criteria used internationally in research studies. The DSM-5, published in 2013, included further and more accurate specifiers compared to its predecessor, the DSM-4-TR. Semi-structured interviews such as the Kitty Schedule for Affective Disorders and Schizophrenia and the Structured Clinical Interview for DSM-4 are used for diagnostic confirmation of bipolar disorder. Several rating scales for the screening and evaluation of bipolar disorder exist, including the Bipolar Spectrum Diagnostic Scale, Mood Disorder Questionnaire, the General Behavior Inventory and the Hypomania Checklist. The use of evaluation scales cannot substitute a full clinical interview but they serve to systematize the recollection of symptoms. On the other hand, instruments for screening bipolar disorder tend to have lower sensitivity. Diagnosis Differential Diagnosis Bipolar Spectrum there are several other mental disorders with symptoms similar to those seen in bipolar disorder. These disorders include schizophrenia, major depressive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and certain personality disorders, such as borderline personality disorder. Although there are no biological tests that are diagnostic of bipolar disorder, blood tests and slash or imaging may be carried out to exclude medical illnesses with clinical presentations similar to that of bipolar disorder. Neurologic diseases such as such as multiple sclerosis, complex partial seizures, strokes, brain tumors, Wilson disease, traumatic brain injury, Huntington's disease, and complex migraines can mimic features of bipolar disorder. An EEG may be used to exclude neurological disorders such as epilepsy, and a CT scan or MRI of the head may be used to exclude brain lesions. Additionally, Disorders of the endocrine system such as hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and Cushing's disease are in the differential as is the connective tissue disease systemic lupus erythematosus. Infectious causes of mania which may appear similar to bipolar mania include herpes encephalitis, HIV, influenza, or neurosyphilis. Certain vitamin deficiencies such as pellagra, vitamin B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and Wernick-Korsakoff syndrome can also lead to mania. A review of current and recent medications and drug use is considered to rule out these causes. Common medications that can cause manic symptoms include antidepressants, prednisone, Parkinson's disease medications, thyroid hormone, stimulants, and certain antibiotics.
Bipolar spectrum disorders includes bipolar I disorder, bipolar II disorder, cyclothymic disorder, and cases where subthreshold symptoms are found to cause clinically significant impairment or distress. These disorders involve major depressive episodes that alternate with manic or hypomanic episodes, or with mixed episodes that feature symptoms of both mood states. The concept of the bipolar spectrum is similar to that of Emil Kreppelin's original concept of manic depressive illness. Unipolar hypomania without accompanying depression has been noted in the medical literature. There is speculation as to whether this condition may occur with greater frequency in the general, untreated population. Successful social function of these potentially high achieving individuals may lead to being labeled as normal, rather than as individuals with substantial dysregulation. Criteria and subtypes The DSM and the ICD characterize bipolar disorder as a spectrum of disorders occurring on a continuum. The DSM 5 lists three specific subtypes. When relevant, specifiers for peripartum onset and with rapid cycling should be used with any subtype. Individuals who have sub-threshold symptoms that cause clinically significant distress or impairment, but do not meet full criteria for one of the three subtypes may be diagnosed with other specified or unspecified bipolar disorder. Other specified bipolar disorder is used when a clinician chooses to provide an explanation for why the full criteria were not met. Most people who meet criteria for bipolar disorder experience a number of episodes, on average 0.4 to 0.7 per year, lasting 3 to 6 months. Rapid cycling, however, is a course specifier that may be applied to any of the above subtypes. It is defined as having four or more mood disturbance episodes within a one-year span and is found in a significant proportion of individuals with bipolar disorder. These episodes are separated from each other by a remission for at least two months or a switch in mood polarity. The definition of rapid cycling most frequently cited in the literature is that of Dunner and Feeve, at least four major depressive, manic, hypomanic, or mixed episodes are required to have occurred during a 12-month period. Ultra-rapid and ultra-ultra-rapid or ultra dian cycling have also been described. The literature examining the pharmacological treatment of rapid cycling is sparse and there is no clear consensus with respect to its optimal pharmacological management. There are a number of pharmacological and psychotherapeutic techniques used to treat bipolar disorder. Individuals may use self-help and pursue recovery. Hospitalization may be required especially with the manic episodes present in bipolar I. This can be voluntary or involuntary. Long-term inpatient stays are now less common due to deinstitutionalization, although these can still occur. Following a hospital admission, support services available can include drop centers, visits from members of a community mental health team or an assertive community treatment team, supported employment and patient-led support groups, intensive outpatient programs. These are sometimes referred to as partial inpatient programs. Psychotherapy is aimed at alleviating core symptoms, recognizing episode triggers, reducing negative expressed emotion in relationships, recognizing prodromal symptoms before full-blown recurrence, and practicing the factors that lead to maintenance of remission. Cognitive behavioral therapy, family-focused therapy, and psychoeducation have the most evidence for efficacy in regard to relapse prevention, while interpersonal and social rhythm therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy appear the most effective in regard to residual depressive symptoms. Most studies have been based only on bipolar I, however, 
and treatment during the acute phase can be a particular challenge. Some clinicians emphasize the need to talk with individuals experiencing mania, to develop a therapeutic alliance in support of recovery. A number of medications are used to treat bipolar disorder. The medication with the best evidence is lithium, which is an effective treatment for acute manic episodes, preventing relapses, and bipolar depression. Lithium reduces the risk of suicide, self-harm, and death in people with bipolar disorder. It is unclear if ketamine is useful in bipolar as of 2015. Lithium and the anticonvulsants carbamazepine, lamotrigine, and valproic acid are used as mood stabilizers to treat bipolar disorder. These mood stabilizers are used for long-term mood stabilization but have not demonstrated the ability to quickly treat acute bipolar depression. Lithium is preferred for long-term mood stabilization. Carbamazepine effectively treats manic episodes, with some evidence it has greater benefit in rapid cycling bipolar disorder, or those with more psychotic symptoms or a more schizoaffective clinical picture. It is less effective in preventing relapse than lithium or valproate. Since then, valproate has become a commonly prescribed treatment, and is effective in treating manic episodes. Lamotrigine has some efficacy in treating bipolar depression, and this benefit is greatest in more severe depression. It has also been shown to have some benefit in preventing bipolar disorder relapses though there are concerns about the studies done, and is of no benefit in rapid cycling subtype of bipolar disorder. The effectiveness of topiramate is unknown. Antipsychotic medications are effective for short-term treatment of bipolar manic episodes and appear to be superior to lithium and anticonvulsants for this purpose. Atypical antipsychotics are also indicated for bipolar depression refractory to treatment with mood stabilizers. Olanzapine is effective in preventing relapses, although the supporting evidence is weaker than the evidence for lithium. Antidepressants are not recommended for use alone in the treatment of bipolar disorder and have not been found to be of any benefit over that found with mood stabilizers. Atypical antipsychotic medications are preferred over antidepressants to augment the effects of mood stabilizers due to the lack of efficacy of antidepressants in bipolar disorder. Rapid Cycling Management Short courses of benzodiazepines may be used in addition to other medications until mood stabilizing become effective. Electroconvulsive therapy is an effective form of treatment for acute mood disturbances in those with bipolar disorder, especially when psychotic or catatonic features are displayed. ECT is also recommended for use in pregnant women with bipolar disorder. Contrary to widely held views, stimulants are relatively safe in bipolar disorder, and considerable evidence suggests they may even produce an anti-manic effect. In cases of comorbid ADHD and bipolar, stimulants may help improve both conditions. Psychosocial Several studies have suggested that omega-3 fatty acids may have beneficial effects on depressive symptoms, but not manic symptoms. However, only a few small studies of variable quality have been published and there is not enough evidence to draw any firm conclusions. Medication Mood stabilizers Antipsychotics Antidepressants Other Alternative medicine Prognosis Functioning Recovery and recurrence Suicide Epidemiology History Society and culture Specific populations 
a lifelong condition with periods of partial or full recovery in between recurrent episodes of relapse, bipolar disorder is considered to be a major health problem worldwide because of the increased rates of disability and premature mortality. It is also associated with CO occurring psychiatric and medical problems and high rates of initial under or misdiagnosis causing a delay in appropriate treatment interventions and contributing to poorer prognosis. After a diagnosis is made, it remains difficult to achieve complete remission of all symptoms with the currently available psychiatric medications and symptoms often become progressively more severe over time. Compliance with medications is one of the most significant factors that can decrease the rate and severity of relapse and have a positive impact on overall prognosis. However, the types of medications used in treating BD commonly cause side effects and more than 75% of individuals with BD inconsistently take their medications for various reasons. Of the various types of the disorder, Rapid cycling is associated with the worst prognosis due to higher rates of self-harm and suicide. Individuals diagnosed with bipolar who have a family history of bipolar disorder are at a greater risk for more frequent manic-slash-hypomanic episodes. Early onset and psychotic features are also associated with worse outcomes, as well as subtypes that are non-responsive to lithium. Early recognition and intervention also improve prognosis as the symptoms in earlier stages are less severe and more responsive to treatment. Onset after adolescence is connected to better prognosis for both genders, and being male is a protective factor against higher levels of depression. For women, better social functioning prior to developing bipolar disorder and being a parent are protective towards suicide attempts. People with bipolar disorder often experience a decline in cognitive functioning during their first episode, after which a certain degree of cognitive dysfunction typically becomes permanent, with more severe impairment during acute phases and moderate impairment during periods of remission. As a result, two-thirds of people with BD continue to experience impaired psychosocial functioning in between episodes even when their mood symptoms are in full remission. A similar pattern is seen in both BDI and BD2, but people with BD2 experience a lesser degree of impairment. Cognitive deficits typically increase over the course of the illness. Higher degrees of impairment correlate with the number of previous manic episodes and hospitalizations, and with the presence of psychotic symptoms. Early intervention can slow the progression of cognitive impairment, while treatment at later stages can help reduce distress and negative consequences related to cognitive dysfunction. Despite the overly ambitious goals that are frequently part of manic episodes, Symptoms of mania undermine the ability to achieve these goals and often interfere with an individual's social and occupational functioning. One third of people with BD remain unemployed for one year following a hospitalization for mania. Depressive symptoms during and between episodes, which occur much more frequently for most people than hypomanic or manic symptoms over the course of illness are associated with lower functional recovery in between episodes, including unemployment or underemployment for both BDI and BD2. However, the course of illness and cognitive performance are the best predictors of employment outcomes in individuals with bipolar disorder, followed by symptoms of depression and years of education. A naturalistic study from first admission for mania or mixed episode found that 50% achieved syndromal recovery within six weeks and 98% within two years. Within two years, 72% achieved symptomatic recovery and 43% achieved functional recovery. However, 40% went on to experience a new episode of mania or depression within two years of syndromal recovery, 
and 19% switched phases without recovery. Symptoms preceding a relapse, especially those related to mania, can be reliably identified by people with bipolar disorder. There have been intents to teach patients coping strategies when noticing such symptoms with encouraging results. Bipolar disorder can cause suicidal ideation that leads to suicidal attempts. Individuals whose bipolar disorder begins with a depressive or mixed affective episode seem to have a poorer prognosis and an increased risk of suicide. One out of two people with bipolar disorder attempt suicide at least once during their lifetime and many attempts are successfully completed. The annual average suicide rate is 0.4%, which is 10 a euro 20 times that of the general population. The standardized mortality ratio from suicide in bipolar disorder is between 18 and 25. The lifetime risk of suicide has been estimated to be as high as 20% in those with bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is the sixth leading cause of disability worldwide and has a lifetime prevalence of about 3% in the general population. However, a reanalysis of data from the National Epidemiological Catchment Area Survey in the United States suggested that 0.8% of the population experience a manic episode at least once and a further 0.5% have a hypomanic episode. Including subthreshold diagnostic criteria, such as one or two symptoms over a short time period, an additional 5.1% of the population, adding up to a total of 6.4%, were classified as having a bipolar spectrum disorder. A more recent analysis of data from a second U.S. national comorbidity survey found that 1% met lifetime prevalence criteria for bipolar I, 1.1% for bipolar II, and 2.4% for subthreshold symptoms. There are conceptual and methodological limitations and variations in the findings. Prevalence studies of bipolar disorder are typically carried out by lay interviewers who follow fully structured slash fixed interview schemes. Responses to single items from such interviews may suffer limited validity. In addition, diagnoses vary depending on whether a categorical or spectrum approach is used. This consideration has led to concerns about the potential for both underdiagnosis and overdiagnosis. The incidence of bipolar disorder is similar in men and women as well as across different cultures and ethnic groups. A 2000 study by the World Health Organization found that prevalence and incidence of bipolar disorder are very similar across the world. Age standardized prevalence per 100,000 ranged from 421.0 in South Asia to 481.7 in Africa and Europe for men and from 450.3 in Africa and Europe to 491.6 in Oceania for women. However, severity may differ widely across the globe. Disability adjusted life year rates for example, appear to be higher in developing countries, where medical coverage may be poorer and medication less available. Within the United States, Asian Americans have significantly lower rates than their African and European American counterparts. Late adolescence and early adulthood are peak years for the onset of bipolar disorder. One study also found that in 10% of bipolar cases, the onset of mania had happened after the patient had turned 50. Variations in moods and energy levels have been observed as part of the human experience throughout history. The words melancholia, an old word for depression, and mania originated in ancient Greece. The word melancholia is derived from melos meaning black, and chol, meaning bile or gall, indicative of the term's origins in pre-Hippocratic humoral theory. Within the humoral theories, 
mania was viewed as arising from an excess of yellow bile, or a mixture of black and yellow bile. The linguistic origins of mania, however, are not so clear-cut. Several etymologies were proposed by the ancient Roman physician Saelius Aurelianus, including the Greek word ania, meaning to produce great mental anguish, and manos, meaning relaxed or loose, which would contextually approximate to an excessive relaxing of the mind or soul. There are at least five other candidates, and part of the confusion surrounding the exact etymology of the word mania is its varied usage in the pre-Hippocratic poetry and mythology. In the early 1800s, French psychiatrist Jean A. Perthausen Chin Dominicus Quirol S. Leibmania, one of his effective monomanias, was the first elaboration on what was to become modern depression. The basis of the current conceptualization of bipolar illness can be traced back to the 1850s, in 1850. Jean-Pierre Falred presented a description to the Academy the Paris Psychiatric Society in the course of which he mentioned circular insanity, the lecture was summarized in 1851 in the Gazette des Hôpitaux. Three years later, in 1854, Jules Gabriel Frana OIS Bale Larger described to the French Imperial Arcade copyright me national de ma copyright des a biphasic mental illness causing recurrent oscillations between mania and melancholia, which he termed folie a double form, madness in double form. Bailerger's original paper, De la folie a double form appeared in the medical journal Annals Ma Copyright Dicopsychologics in 1854. These concepts were developed by the German psychiatrist Emil Kreppelin, who, using Kalbam's concept of cyclothymia, categorized and studied the natural course of untreated bipolar patients. He coined the term manic depressive psychosis, after noting that periods of acute illness, manic or depressive, were generally punctuated by relatively symptom-free intervals where the patient was able to function normally. The term manica euro depressive reaction appeared in the first version of the DSM in 1952, influenced by the legacy of Adolf Meyer. Subtyping into unipolar depressive disorders and bipolar disorders was first proposed by German psychiatrists Karl Kleist and Karl Leonhardt in the 1950s and they have been regarded as separate conditions since publication of the DSM-3. The subtypes bipolar 2 and rapid cycling have been included since the DSM-4 based on work from the 1970s by David Dunner, Elliot Gershon, Frederick Goodwin, Ronald Feeve, and Joseph Fleisch. There are widespread problems with social stigma, stereotypes, and prejudice against individuals with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. K. Redfield Jameson a clinical psychologist and professor of psychiatry at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, profiled her own bipolar disorder in her memoir An Unquiet Mind. In his autobiography Manicdotes, There's Madness in His Method, Chris Joseph describes his struggle between the creative dynamism which allowed the creation of his multi-million pound advertising agency Hook Advertising and the money-squandering dark despair of his bipolar illness. Several dramatic works have portrayed characters with traits suggestive of the diagnosis that has been the subject of discussion by psychiatrists and film experts alike. A notable example is Mr. Jones, in which Mr. Jones swings from a manic episode into a depressive phase and back again spending time in a psychiatric hospital and displaying many of the features of the syndrome. In the Mosquito Coast, Ali Fox displays some features including recklessness, grandiosity, increased goal-directed activity and mood liability, as well as some paranoia. Psychiatrists have suggested that Willie Loman, 
the main character in Arthur Miller's classic play Death of a Salesman, suffers from bipolar disorder, though that specific term for the condition did not exist when the play was written. TV specials, for example the BBC's Stephen Fry, The Secret Life of the Manic Depressive, MTV's True Life, I'm Bipolar, talk shows, and public radio shows, and the greater willingness of public figures to discuss their own bipolar disorder, have focused on psychiatric conditions, thereby, raising public awareness. On April 7, 2009, the nighttime drama 90210 on the CW Network, aired a special episode where the character Silver was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Stacy Slater, a character from the BBC soap EastEnders, has been diagnosed with the disorder. The storyline was developed as part of the BBC's Headroom campaign. The Channel 4 soap Brookside had earlier featured a story about bipolar disorder when the character Jimmy Corkill was diagnosed with the condition. 2011 Showtime's political thriller drama Homeland protagonist Carrie Matheson is bipolar, which she has kept secret since her school days. In April 2014, ABC premiered a medical drama, Black Box in which the main character, a world-renowned neuroscientist, is bipolar. In the 1920s, Emile Crepelin noted that manic episodes are rare before puberty. In general, bipolar disorder in children was not recognized in the first half of the 20th century. This issue diminished with an increased following of the DSM criteria in the last part of the 20th century. While in adults the course of bipolar disorder is characterized by discrete episodes of depression and mania with no clear symptomatology between them, in children and adolescents very fast mood changes or even chronic symptoms are the norm. Pediatric bipolar disorder is commonly characterized by outbursts of anger, irritability, and psychosis, rather than euphoric mania, which is more likely to be seen in adults. Early onset bipolar disorder is more likely to manifest as depression rather than mania or hypomania. The diagnosis of childhood bipolar disorder is controversial although it is not under discussion that the typical symptoms of bipolar disorder have negative consequences for minors suffering them. The debate is mainly centered on whether what is called bipolar disorder in children refers to the same disorder as when diagnosing adults, and the related question of whether the criteria for diagnosis for adults are useful and accurate when applied to children. Regarding diagnosis of children, some experts recommend following the DSM criteria. Others believe that these criteria do not correctly separate children with bipolar disorder from other problems such as ADHD, and emphasize fast mood cycles. Still others argue that what accurately differentiates children with bipolar disorder is irritability. The practice parameters of the EDISAP encourage the first strategy. American children and adolescents diagnosed with bipolar disorder in community hospitals increased fourfold reaching rates of up to 40% in 10 years around the beginning of the 21st century, while in outpatient clinics it doubled reaching 6%. Studies using DSM criteria show that up to 1% of youth may have bipolar disorder. Treatment involves medication and psychotherapy. Drug prescription usually consists in mood stabilizers and atypical antipsychotics. Among the former, lithium is the only compound approved by the FDA for children. Psychological treatment combines normally education on the disease, group therapy, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Chronic medication is often needed. Current research directions for bipolar disorder in children include optimizing treatments, 
increasing the knowledge of the genetic and neurobiological basis of the pediatric disorder and improving diagnostic criteria. Some treatment research suggests that psychosocial interventions that involve the family, psychoeducation, and skills building can benefit in a pharmacotherapy. Unfortunately, the literature and research on the effects of psychosocial therapy on BPSD is scarce, making it difficult to determine the efficacy of various therapies. The DSM-5 has proposed a new diagnosis which is considered to cover some presentations currently thought of as childhood onset bipolar. There is a relative lack of knowledge about bipolar disorder in late life. There is evidence that it becomes less prevalent with age but nevertheless accounts for a similar percentage of psychiatric admissions, that older bipolar patients had first experienced symptoms at a later age, that later onset of mania is associated with more neurologic impairment, that substance abuse is considerably less common in older groups and that there is probably a greater degree of variation in presentation and course, for instance individuals may develop new onset mania associated with vascular changes, or become manic only after recurrent depressive episodes, or may have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder at an early age and still meet criteria. There is also some weak and not conclusive evidence that mania is less intense and there is a higher prevalence of mixed episodes, although there may be a reduced response to treatment. Overall, there are likely more similarities than differences from younger adults. In the elderly, recognition and treatment of bipolar disorder may be complicated by the presence of dementia or the side effects of medications being taken for other conditions some claim there is a link between creativity and mental illness including bipolar disorder aristotle wrote that philosophers poets politicians and artists all have tendencies toward a euro emelancholia a euro edward munch Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin, Sylvia Plath, Virginia Woolf, and Ludwig Beethoven are thought to have had bipolar disorder. Many wrote that their struggle with mood disorders to be a driver of their art. Munch, the artist of the scream, wrote in his diary, My fear of life is necessary to me, as is my illness. They are indistinguishable from me and their destruction would destroy my art. Some studies show that people working in creative fields show a higher rate of bipolar disorder. Poets, and in particular female poets, show the highest rates of mental illness, specifically of bipolar disorder. This correlation has been named a euro Sylvia Plath effect a euro after the poet who infamously killed herself by putting her head in an oven while her two children slept. It is unclear if the existence of a mood disorder makes an individual more likely to pursue a career in a creative field, or whether the stress of creative fields creates a higher incidence of mood disorder. Periods of intense creative activity may be associated with episodes of hypomania, a characteristic symptom of bipolar disorder, which hints at a potential causality. Children Elderly Artists Notes <laughs>